We have come with open heart. Let the ancient word impart us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We shall not come here and go back the same way we have come in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Almighty God will send His word to our lives. The Lord, the word of God will heal us. The word of God will deliver us from every form of destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, "The entrance of the word of God giveth light." He give it understanding to the simple. Lord, as we go into your word this morning, this afternoon, let your word to enter us, to Amen. give us light, to give us understanding. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. we shall never be in dark in every area of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. the word of God will shine light to every dark area of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. thank you, Father, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, you may be seated as we listen to God's word. Again, this is a launch our service. Launch our service, the time we gather together to pray for the work of our hands, to pray for our businesses, to pray for our ministry, to pray for our careers and the almighty God has always been answering us today he will do yet the more much more for us in the mighty name of Jesus the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day our today shall be better than yesterday in the mighty name of Jesus and our tomorrow shall be more glorious than today in the mighty name of Jesus thank you Lord for answer prayers for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brethren, by the grace of God, I have a message titled, O Lord, deliver me from the pits and establish me. O Lord, deliver me from the pits and establish me. Our text is taken from the following books. Psalm 40, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 40, 1 to 3. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 to 11. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 to 11. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 to verse 13. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible is speaking in the book of Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. That the hope deferred makes the heart sick. That when the desire for the while will perfect you, will strengthen you, will establish you, and it will set to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. And this is the word of God for you today. You may have been suffering. <laughs> Doing the word of God, the work that God has placed in your hands. You may have been suffering. Doing all things possible in the area of your business, in the area of your career, you are diligent, you are hardworking. 
you are faithful, you are prayerful, and it's like nothing is working. Hang on this work today. The Almighty God is going to change that story in the mighty name of Jesus. The Almighty God will change that story. He said, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, he said, the Lord of God has been for you. He will perfect you. He will establish you and he will set you. That shall be your story today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know any area of life that you may have been putting in your best and it seems nothing is working. From today, the story will change. Amen. The story will change. Amen. Said, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the said time to show you mercy. The mercy of God will come upon your business. God will show you mercy in your business. He will show you mercy in your finances. He will show you business in the works of your hands. He will show you mercy in your career. And by his mercy, he will let his favor to come upon you. This is the set time that the almighty God will make his favor to come upon your business. That business that is stagnated, that business that is in the pit, the almighty God is bringing out, drawing you that business out of the pit and it's going to establish the business. In the mighty name of Jesus. I love the way Psalm 40 verse 1 to 3 puts it. He said, I waited patiently upon the Lord. He said, he inclined to me. He heard my cry. He brought my feet out of the horrible pit. And from the merry claim, he set my feet upon the rock. He established my goings. He said, he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see and fear and trust the Lord. That shall be your story. That shall be your story. Amen. You have waited upon God in prayers, in fasting. The Almighty God will incline to you. He will hear your cry. He will bring your feet out of the merry clay and from the horrible pit. He will set your feet upon the rock. He will establish your goings. He will put a new song in your mouth. Many shall see it and fear and trust the Lord. Your testimony shall be fearful testimonies. Amen. The ear that he hear that hears will tingle in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The ear that hears will tingle in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Daddy, for answer prayers. Amen. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bible speaking again in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. It said, Who preferred Make the heart to be sick. Hope deferred makes the heart to be sick. Have you been praying, fasting on a particular issue? Have you been waiting on God in fast, in prayers, in reading of the word, in meditation, in laboring, being diligent in your duty, and it seems nothing is happening? Today, the Almighty God will step in for you. The Bible says, For after you have suffered a while, you have suffered a while indeed. The Almighty God will step in. He will perfect all that has to do with you. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. He will say to you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That shall be your portion. That shall be your story in the mighty name of Jesus. I will say, who oh, be far make the heart sick. Say, but when the reserve comment is like the tree of life. <laughs> the tree of life means it's a generational blessings that will come to you. The blessings that the Almighty God will release into your life will be generational. It will not just be for a month, for, for this season. It will be continuous. It will be continuous Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. It Amen. shall be a tree of life because you have labored, because you have waited, because you have prayed, because you have meditated on the word of God, because you have been diligent in the work that God has placed in your hands. He will remember you today. He will favor you. Beyond your widest imagination, the almighty God will favor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How to wait upon the Lord for your deliverance from the pits. Many people don't know how to wait. And that's why they don't get the deliverance that they need. How to wait for your deliverance from the pits. God will first of all deliver you from the pits. Before he will establish you. When you are in the pit level. 
you are below the ground level. So for God to bless you, for God to establish you, the first thing he will do is to bring your feet out of that pit, bring your feet out a way out of that pit, and from that merry clay, and he will now set your feet upon the rock to stabilize you, to give you a sure foundation, to give you a sure foundation before he will now establish you in every, every area of life. That shall be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And many people don't know what it means to wait upon the Lord. When you say waiting upon the Lord, the first thing that comes to the mind of anybody is fasting. Waiting on the Lord is beyond fasting. So today we are going to look at what it means to wait upon the Lord. <laughs> the Bible says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Say they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. It is good to wait upon the Lord. It is good to wait upon the Lord. I can tell you sincerely, waiting upon the Lord is not a joke. And that's where many people fail it. That's where many people fall. Waiting upon God requires God's strength, strength from God. Requires prayer. Requires the help of God. So I'm going to take us through what it means to wait upon God. Number one, wait upon God in prayers. So waiting upon God, number one, in prayers. What it means to wait upon God. Number one, in prayers. You wait upon God in prayers. Praying. First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 17. The Bible says there, Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And verse 18 said, In everything give thanks to God. In everything we should give thanks to God. For this is the will of God concerning us, Christ Jesus. In verse 19 said, Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. And in verse 20, he said, despise not prophesying the prophecies, the promises that God has given to you, don't despise them. Many people don't have that energy to pray. Many people fail in that, in that, in that instance. In your business, you've started your business. The ministry that God has called you started you need to labor in prayer. That's one of the ways to wait upon God. You labor in prayer. You pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, pray at night. The Bible says pray without season. You need to have a time where you go to communicate with God. A time of intimacy with God. For well, that is where you draw power from God from. That's where you, God begins to relate with you like a friend. That's where God begins to talk to you. That's where God begins to give you direction in the place of prayers. In the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 35, the Bible says, Early in the morning before the day will break, Jesus Christ will go to a mountain to a solitary place and there he will pray. Why was Jesus Christ praying? Being the Son of God, he understood that he needed power. Without power, you cannot do God's work. Without power, no one can fulfill destiny and purpose. Without power, you will be a mice meat in the, in the teeth of the adversary. May that not be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. It's in the place of prayer. That's where you draw power from the almighty God. And God is always wanting us to come close to him. He's always wanting us to draw near to him. He's always wanting us to have intimacy with him. He wants to bless us. He wants to relate with us. He wants to speak to our heart. Our God is the communicator. He wants to release the blessings to us. He wants to give us direction. He wants to, to have fellowship with us. But many Christians run from that place of prayer. It is often said in the world that a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. If you want to have power, dwell in prayer. No wonder the Bible says, pray without season. Pray without season. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 
pray your understanding and you see your life getting better and better every day. That business that God has given to you, don't take that business for granted. Now, through that business, God will bless you. Through that business, God will make you a blessing to others. So you need to pray for that business. You need to pray that that business will grow. You need to pray that that business will become a mighty tree under which others will bless in the mighty name of Jesus. And the almighty God who has given that business to you will not leave you by yourself. But you need to come closer to God. You need to draw near to God in prayers and it will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, wait upon God in fasting. Wait upon God in fasting. And that is the one that many of us know. They believe that when we say wait upon God, it's just about fasting. There is a true fasting that we must also be involved in. There's a way you fast, it becomes like just uh, 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 just starving yourself. So today we're going to see the kind of fast that God demands from us. Let us see the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah 58. I'll read from verse 1. I would like us to be very attentive here. Isaiah 58, from verse 1. Say, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and they lie to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness, and, fight, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask, of me, the ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure, and exert all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to Smite with a feast of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is this such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Let us see, yeah, see what verse 6 says. Is not this the fire that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy laden burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Praise God. From verse 1, they began to talk. They say, God, we have been fasting, we have been praying, we have been approaching you, and yet you see us not. And yet, you are not taking, take, taking note of us. And God began to tell them, Say, is this the kind of fast that you fast? That you think I will accept? You see, on the day of your fast, you still burden the people. You still have a feast of wickedness. You are still as wicked as you used to be. You are still doing the thing the way you used to do. Then, you don't call that a fast. He began to tell them, this is the kind of fast I expect from you. On the day that you fast, you must lose the bond of wickedness. You must lose all those you place in your heart. All those you are embittered towards. All those you hate. All those you speak evil about. You must lose them from your heart. Release your hearts. God is watching our hearts. The day we say we are fasting. Are you fasting? Are you holding somebody in bondage? In your heart? Still holding somebody? Being, still, still, still being beat and bitter towards somebody and you call that the fast and God began to tell them that is not the kind of fast that I want from you he began to show them the kind of fast let us read further it's not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness so on the day that you go to God in fasting in prayer if you want God to accept your prayer to, to accept your fasting this is what you do Free your heart. Deliver from your heart everyone that you held bound. 
everyone that you show hatred, hatred to. Release them from your heart. Let bitterness no longer be in your heart. Free them. Let them go free. No matter whatever they may have done towards you, for your own good, release them. Let no man be able to stop your blessings from getting to you because you are holding them bound. Free yourself. Verse 7 is not to deal thy bread to the hungry and thou that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh then shall thy light the verse 8 then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thy health shall spring forth speedily <laughs> when you begin to do the right fasting see what God says said your health shall spring forth speedily what this tells me is that the sickness that some people have in their bodies is as a result of the bondage they have put. They are the people that have kept, kept in bondage in their hearts. If you can release them and fast, God will make your head to spring forth speedily. I pray this afternoon that the Almighty God will make our health to spring forth speedily as we release everyone that will hold in in bondage in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God shall accept our fast in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, said, you should also be kind to others. That is the, the in the nutshell what verse 7 is saying. Be kind. Show mercy to others. When you see those that are naked, clothe them. Help to clothe them. Somebody in penury and you are in the place of help. Be of help. And when you begin to do all this, you will see the blessing of God being released your life. Praise God. So I don't know, have you waited upon God in a fast? Have you waited upon God in a fast? Today the Almighty God will show you mercy. The Almighty God will step in concerning that issue that you are believing in Him for. The Almighty God will step in in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Another way we can wait upon God is wait upon God in expectations, in hope. In expectations in hope, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 12, say, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it's like the tree of life. It's like the tree of life. So you need to hope, you need to be full of expectation. Don't kill that expectation. Don't tell yourself, Why am I hopeful? What am I still expecting? That I've reached my wit end. I cannot, I don't think God will be able to do it for me again. So as you fast, as you pray, be hopeful, be expectant. Let your expectation be high. That I know that this thing I'm asking from God, that God will do it. And you will see God stepping for you, stepping in for you. When you lose the hope, when you stop, when you stop hoping, that means you have stopped trusting God. You stop trusting God. And when you stop trusting God, you are saying, God, I don't believe you will do what you will say you said you will do for me. The Bible speaks in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. Said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That he that must come to him must believe that he is, and that is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if you are coming to God, you must have faith. And when you have faith, is that faith you have in God that will make you to be hopeful to, 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 to receive what you have from God. And the hope you have from God shows that you trust God. So when there is no faith, there will not be hope. And when there is no hope, there is no trust. So all of them walk hand in hand. So be full of expectation as you pray. And the Almighty God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, wait upon God in faith. Can take down the scripture, Hebrews 11, verse 6. Say, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that must come to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So God wants to see our belief. He wants to see our faith in him before he will step in for you. Why is Abraham called a friend of God? Because God tried him 
God tested him and he refilled. He had so much faith in God. He believed God for everything. And God called him his friend. You cannot be a friend of God and not be blessed. You cannot be a friend, you cannot be a friend of God and not be blessed. Once you are a friend of God, definitely you have intimacy with God. God will definitely bless you. That was what happened to Abraham. And the Almighty God will help us to increase our faith in him. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Number five, wait upon God in obedience. Wait upon God in obedience. Your fasting, your praying, your believing God, you must still be obedient to God. These are the things that help your waiting. You cannot say you are waiting upon God and yet you are disobedient to his command. God sent Abraham on an errand in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. Then leave your father's house, leave your country, leave your brethren and go to a land that I will show you. And he began to give him promises. He said, I will make your name great. He said, I will bless you and make you a blessing. He said, I will cause those that curse you and I will bless those that bless you. And in verse 4, the Bible says, And Abraham obeyed God. And he took his wife, took his nephew, and took all his belongings. And he stepped forward to go to the land that God will show to him. That is obedience. So in our waiting, we must be obedient to God. Be obedient to the instructions. God will be speaking to you. Don't say, I've waited, I've been fasting all this while, and nothing is happening. <laughs> and say, this one, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do it my own way. Please, don't stop your blessings. Keep believing. Keep obeying God in your waiting. Like the way the book of Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 1 puts it. Proverbs 13 and verse 1. Said, a wise son heareth his father's Instruction, but his corner heareth not rebuke. A wise son heareth his father's instruction. Are you a wise son? Hmm. Then you must hear your father's instruction. What instruction is God giving to you? Are you hearing instruction? Are you obeying instructions? So, in our waiting, we must hear our father's instruction. We must do what God wants us to do. That is what makes our waiting to be worth the while. Number six, wait upon God in diligence, in hard work. Wait upon God in diligence. You cannot say, I have fasted, I have prayed, I am obedient to God, I have listened to God's instruction, and then you become lazy. Don't be lazy. You must be hard working. Proverbs 22, 29. It says, thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand for kings and not mean men. Our God is not a lazy God, so he doesn't expect you to be lazy. He said, my father walketh and I walk. He said, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can walk. So stand firm. Do the work. Be diligent. The assignment that God has given to you, the work of your hands, be diligent there. Let it not be spoken concerning you that is a hard working, that he works hard in the church, but in his place of work is lazy. God is not happy with it. Be a diligent, a diligent, diligent worker. Be a diligent businessman. And you see God showing up for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number seven, wait on the Lord by confessing and declaring the word of God on your situation. So while waiting, search out the book, search out from the Bible, the word of God concerning that issue, concerning that matter you are believing in God for. And begin to declare the word of God. Begin to declare the word of God on that challenge. Begin to declare the word of God on your business. That business that seems that it's in a pit, 
begin to declare the word of God upon that business. For instance, you can pray concerning my business. The Bible says, for every labor, there must be profits. Lord, this is my work. This is my business. Let my business be profitable. Let my business be profitable. My business shall no longer be in the pit. The Lord God Almighty is what your word says. Bless the work of my hands. Bless my ministry. And as you begin to declare the word of God upon that challenge, you see the fruitfulness of the word of God in that area of your life. The Bible speaks in the book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. It says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat of the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Of the tongue. It says, Those that love it shall eat of the fruit thereof. So your mouth, your tongue has power. It has power to kill. It has power to make alive. So what you say is what you see. The Bible says, as they have said in my ears, so shall I do. What are you speaking in that challenge that you're facing? What are you saying in that challenge that your business is facing right now? What are you saying in that challenge that your ministry is facing right now? Are you declaring the word of God? Begin to declare the word of God, the promise of God concerning that matter. And you will see it come to pass at the end of the day, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, after you have suffered for a while, you have suffered for a while, he said the Almighty God will show up for you. He said he will perfect all that has to do with you. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. He will say to you. The Almighty God will do much more for us in the mighty name of Jesus. He will perfect all that concerns us. He will establish us. He will settle us. He will strengthen us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Then Proverbs 13, verse 2. Say, man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. Say, man shall eat what good by the word of his mouth. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. So what is coming out from your mouth? You want to eat good? You want good things to begin to happen from you, from your life, in your business? Learn to declare the word of God, the promises of God. Don't ever say evil concerning your business. Don't speak evil concerning any area of your life. As you begin to say it, so you shall say it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number eight. Wait on the Lord by reading the word of God, studying the word of God, meditating on the word of God, like we find in Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. So what that man said, Blessed is the man that standeth, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of scornful. But in the word of the Lord does he delight and meditate upon day and night. He said it shall be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Be like that man who meditates upon God's word, who reads God's word, who studies God's word, and as you begin to do this, while you're waiting, you'll see God begin to work for you beyond your widest imagination. Say so it shall be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That shall be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The almighty God will bless your hands, the work of your hands. And whatsoever you do it shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16. Said your word was found and I didn't eat up your word. Said your word became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am yours, O Lord of hosts. So find the word of God. Read the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. Eat it up. Study the word of God. And the word of God will become joy and the rejoicing of your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number nine. Wait on the Lord by using the gift and talent that God has given to you. Wait on the Lord 
Use that gift and that talent that God has given to you. Don't waste it. Use that gift. Use that talent. For everyone that God has given a talent, God requires that you use it. God is not wasteful. God is not a waster. That talent that God has given to you, use it wisely. And when you begin to use this, while you wait upon God, you'll see your life getting better. And lastly, number, number 10, wait on the Lord by helping the poor. Wait on the Lord helping the poor. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Say, he that giveth to the poor, lendeth to God. And that which he has given, he will give back to him. And when God gives back to you, he deals with <laughs> interest. Wait on the Lord. Be kind to others. Be good to others. And you see God helping you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You see God helping you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He that help lend it, give to God. Give to poor, let the poor lend it to God. And that which he has given, the almighty God will give back to him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Quickly, the next five minutes, I'll just show us the results of waiting on the Lord. The results. Number one. God inclines to you, like you find in Psalm 40 and verse 1. God inclines to you. What does it mean that God, how does God incline to you? Psalm 40 verse 1. He said, I waited patiently on the Lord. He said, he heard my cry. Incline to me. Incline to me. That means God will be favorably disposed to you. As you cry to him. He will be favorably disposed to you. So that is one of the results of waiting on the Lord. God will become favorably disposed to you. He will incline to you. Number two, God hears your cry. Say, so I waited patiently on the Lord. You have been waiting in prayers, waiting in fasting, waiting, waiting in giving, waiting in meditation on the word of God waiting and being obedient to God and God will answer your prayers he will answer your prayers he will hear your cry in the mighty name of Jesus he will hear your cry in the mighty name of Jesus he will hear your cry in the mighty name of Jesus number four number three the Lord delivers you from the pits and the merry claim from delay and limitations. So I waited patiently on the Lord. He said, He heard my cry inclined unto me. He brought my feet out of the miry clay and from the horrible pits. So, one of the results of waiting on the Lord is that God will bring your feet out of the horrible pits. That horrible pit of delay, horrible pit of limitation, the Almighty God will bring you out from that pit in the mighty name of Jesus. The Almighty God will bring you out of that pit in the mighty name of Jesus. The Almighty God will bring you out of that pit in the mighty name of Jesus. He will bless you beyond your widest imagination in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, God will establish you and all that has to do with you. In verse three, he said, the Lord plant my feet upon the rock he has established my goings and he has put a new song in my mouth. So the reward or the result, the result of waiting upon God is that God will establish you. He will establish the work of your hands. He will establish your business. He will establish your ministry. He will establish your career in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That business that has been in a pit, hidden, limited, the almighty God will establish that business. The Almighty God will establish that ministry. The Almighty God will establish that career of your yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number five. God gives you a new song. He said, you have put a new song in my mouth. Many shall see and hear and trust the Lord. Who is he that have a new song? Him that God has given testimony. When God blesses you and gives you a testimony, a change of story, your song 
will, will, will change. Your song will change. All the what happened to Israel after their way to Egypt as they crossed the Red Sea. When they saw what God did for them, they said, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion, for this is the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is now. The set time has come. So waiting upon God leads to God showing mercy to us. As our prayers, when Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'd like us to be on our feet as we pray to appreciate God for His word for today. Father, we appreciate you for your word that has gone forth to give us life, to give us understanding. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Blessed be your name, Daddy. Blessed be your name, Daddy. Thank you, the mortal. Thank you, the invisible. Thank you, the only wise God. Mighty and everlasting Father. Accept our thanks and appreciation in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Accept our thanks and appreciation in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, I pray for every one of us here today. I pray that you bring us out from the horrible pits. Yeah. Bring our businesses, our careers, our ministries. I'll draw us out from that horrible pits. From that merry claim. Set our feet upon the rock. Establish our goings, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver us, O God, from the pits. And establish us, O God. Deliver us, O God, from his pits. And establish us, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Daddy, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we go back to our offices today, the Almighty God take us there safely, protect us. Defend Amen. us, shield us from every attack on the enemy. Amen. Fight and battles for us. Give Amen. us victory in every day of life. In Amen. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in our lives. And no flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.